Um, I still really don't know who's in the lead. Um, and maybe no one is, but uh, things are definitely not looking as bad from my perspective as they did at the beginning of turn seven, although the astute viewer may disagree with me on that. And I'll tell you, I'll kind of defend my position a little bit. So first off, um, Spartacus backed off. He got scared off by the Warhammer and didn't pursue the melee, which is good, I think, for me. Um, I I could potentially have taken him out in that combat, but I could have also lost a guy, and it's just not something I really want to gamble at this point. Um, other than that, the, a lot of dismissals happened, and forces are in different places. Um, he's mainly got his guys in the southern area. Um, heading for the Colonial Labyrinth, I'm going to be able to get Agent 911 here before he can get any more guys in the Labyrinth other than Spartacus. So, that might put him up by one still. No? Yeah, that might put him up by one still if Spartacus meets his challenge, um, which means I need to get, I'll need i need to get another guy in there. Assuming we both meet our challenge, Marcus and Spartacus, um, I'll need to get another guy in there at least to tie it up. Um... I'm looking good in, in terms of the modern Labyrinth. I have a lot of guys heading in there um, right now, three, which is good for me. But he's got the lead there. So he's, I mean, he's, I guess I say it's difficult to tell who has the lead. He has the lead. Um, but I feel like I have a, have the opportunity to turn it around. It's not, it's not too far of a difference. Nice thing for me, Boris, his man who is wounded, who got shot twice by Paraxian, just dismissed in right here. Um which I can see why he did that, I guess. I think he must be going for the Modern Labyrinth um, with Boris. Otherwise, I don't know why he would have dismissed in here to get to the Colonial. reason I'm saying that is because I'm assuming he didn't choose these two because he doesn't want to get shot up by Praxin. He can still get shot up there, however. Um, it, it won't be as clear of a shot, but at least I'll get to um, shoot at him some more, which is fun for Praxi, and a little bit of a rivalry is developing between these two. Um, similar to the rivalry that an apple has with William Tell. I have a tough decision to make, and it's it's really eating up on, at, at my insights. Um, I don't know what to do, honestly. I'll say that flat out, but maybe if I talk it out with um, the faceless viewer, it might help. Um, so, I, I have Milena Erabato, Freedom Fighter, coming up this way. She has a card. I don't know what this card is. Um, I can turn it over and see it's an Elven Windsword, but that's not actually what it is. That's a fake. That's just to, so that I know that there's a card there. Um, the Elven Windsword isn't even in set one world spanner. It's from other set, some other set, and I can't tell you what set that is. I'm sorry. But she's coming up this way. I have a Sergeant Grint, and he has a card too, and it's an L-Wave Grenades, and that's really what it is. And this is a good place to ambush her with some L-Wave Grenades. The problem is, here's here's my problem, he isn't that great at throwing, not as good at throwing as she is at dodging, so I don't, I feel like I'm going to have one good shot at her. Well, maybe two, maybe three, I don't know, but... um Actually, talking is actually helping. So what I was considering, Sergeant Gritz, you know, I want him to get to this labyrinth. I was also going to put Ger Geronimo in the labyrinth. It would be nice, though, if Geronimo was the one to ambush her with his much better throwing capability and the fact that he's not particularly good at the modern labyrinth. Um, he's got some good stats that might come into play. You know, these bottom two tend to come into play a lot in labyrinths, but... He doesn't have the age advantage that Sergeant Gray would have. Um, the problem is, is to, in order to trade the cards between the two of them, I'll have to leave them out in the open, open to Milena Erabato's fire. Now, I could think about what cards are are left in the deck. There's at least one more rifle out there. I think. Um. But it's just I could play it really casual, which would make the ambush work better if I just move Sergeant Grid. It's going to tip him off if I do a trade, so I'm leaning that way. I'm going to consult with the oligarchy and get back. I should move Sergeant Grit right here and no more for a couple reasons. So it's not going to look like 
he's moving towards the labyrinth. But it might. It might look that way to Rocking Horse Dreams. It's, I mean, if he really applies and thinks about this one particular move, it's going to look kind of fishy. He might, um, it might scare him off a bit. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. If Milena Arabato is cautious and doesn't go towards the modern labyrinth, that's in my favor too. Because that means she's going to be diverted this way towards the colonial labyrinth, which hopefully Agent 911 will be slowing things down. And if he's not slowing things down, if if um, the Rocky Horse Dreams gets lucky and kills him, um, you know, the colonial labyrinth is going to be lost to me anyway because he's going to score a ton of points there. So I may as well focus on the modern labyrinth anyway, if that's the case. So, you know, either way, I kind of win with that move. And so that's a good move. Um, the reason why this particular spot, as opposed to, you know, one or two more spots, which would look more like he's going to the modern labyrinth, is because if Milena Erobato moves her full movement, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, she's going to be right here. That's nicely within the range. Um, you know, he could actually go one more, one, two, three, four, but there's, yeah, maybe he'll do that. I don't know, I kind of want to keep him in the swamp for some reason. I just like the idea of him, like, in the swamp, waiting to ambush. Maybe I'll reconsider that after I stop. I'm not going to make you be witness to too much of my thinking. Um... All right. So this morning I did a little thinking before I turned the camera on to spare you some of the pauses in between my speech. Um, obviously that's not going to happen completely. So with 911 being here, and actually I thought about it, um, 6 through 12 misses, 5 I would hit myself, I'd need 2, two 3 or 4 to hit him, but if it's melee, I mean I can, he can hit me, his, his melee is not very good. Um, but I'm actually going to give it a turn and see what he does on his next turn. What what I'm thinking is, if he doesn't move 911, then Henny will transfer Pat her throwing axes, and then they can spend the turn after that pestering 911 because he only has three hit points. Actually, you know what? Let's just put them both up here. Um, as long as they don't roll fives, I'm okay with that. Um, so actually, that just that changes everything I thought about doing. Um, but whatever. Boris, I was gonna bring him in to kind of fire off some shots, but now I don't really need his help in here. So what I'm going to do with him, so remember Paraxian has that varmint rifle, which can hit like up to here, it's n 9 range. So he's going to kind of duck through here and then come around 6, and I'll just put that there because I know he's probably going to fire there. Um, Gawain can actually just move here, and then Melina, oh, and Spartacus gets to move on, two. I put this marker out there to remind me, so his range is nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's the farthest he can shoot, right there, um, and if I go this way, he can't see me because of the dome. And in here, even if, I, I think I can get here, so let's, um, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, so, um, if, if you look, he, 
I don't think he can see me because of the dome. Um, I don't know, maybe he can... Melina only has the stiletto, so she's not good for range, but maybe if we can get her in some some hand on hand, which I don't really see happening, but Rexine only has two health. I mean, he has, well, he's really hard to hit, or really hard to damage, I should say. He's a, he's hard to hit, but he's really hard to damage. Um, so that's where the board is now. We'll give Greg a chance to, to shoot. Um, yeah, I can't see him not shooting there. There's a negative penalty, but Sparty got there and going. It looks like Milena Arabato fell right into my trap. I kind of am regretting uh, taking the advice to move move Sarge out of this space. It was sort of a compromise. It turns out she did fall for, for the ruse, so I don't know if um, she still would have fallen for it if he had been there. Basically what this is going to do is he's going to give me another minus one to hit, which makes it less likely I'm going to be able to actually hit her, but still it was a fun little surprise. Um, and I didn't, yeah. Uh, so I get, I get to do opportunity fire there right now, and I also get to do opportunity fire with Paraxian on um, Boris, who moved down here, right here. So that's going to be fun. Um, in other news, these guys have, the two cow pokes have, have, jumped on Agent 911. Oh, and Boris looks like he's going towards the future labyrinth. Um, I'm thinking Rocking Horse Dreams is grasping at straws there. I think I have the, the future labyrinth locked up. Though, you know, if I don't keep scoring points and he keeps sending people there, that's no longer going to be the case. Um, though, if I'm lucky, I could be eliminating Boris right now. So let me do the die roll and then I'll get Unfortunately, I totally missed Milena Arabato. I needed a, a four or better to hit, and that didn't work. I did get Boris, though, for another damage, so he's down to one. That'll, um, whether I get another opportunity to, to shoot at him or not, that's at least going to make him cautious. So Boris takes another hit, and Milena is missed from um, Greg's grenade. But, of course, the varmint rifle hits. Guardian challenge. Ninja assassin. He can only kill you if he finds you. So he needs a seven to squeak, but we need a six. We need a six to pass. And of course, it's... wow. Let's see if Spartacus can do better. Oh, he needed a an eight. No, yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Practicing Sun Tzu. You are one battle away from becoming a Shogun. Oh, let's see what his result was. Go ask that nice looking man in the black outfit for help. Indeed. Oh, he needs a true seven. Since that is not his labyrinth. Let's see if we can get a seven this time. Eight. He fails. Oh, goodness. Apparently you need a little more Sun Tzu. So I forgot to resolve this. Um, Annie is going to attack blue against 911's red, which I guess doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So she amazed. Nice! And now it's black against red to do damage, black against red to do damage, so she needs six to squeak, rolled eight, six, eight, damage, minus two, so she doesn't do any damage. Pat reveals his katana, he needed to roll a two. He rolls a seven and misses, eight and misses.